Good morning. This is Dr. Bill White again, and uh, I'm a general dentist and member of the American Orthodontic Society, and I'm kind of pushing that organization. It's a wonderful organization. Uh, I've done nothing but orthodontics for the last about 45 years, uh, but I had a lot of TMJ work that's almost inseparable from orthodontics to do too. So I want to talk about this two-phase orthodontics. And this young lady that I'm going to go over it had a lack of two-phase orthodontics. In fact, she had no orthodontics at all. And here she is. She worked in the office and she was about 32 years old and no orthodontics. But it should have been started real early with two-phase treatment. And uh, this is something the Pedodontists, uh, or we call them, uh, you know, ortho, uh, the pedodontists uh, would have done here. So, anyway, let's let's look at the results that happened with a lack of this type of orthodontics, early interceptive stuff. Uh, here is her just a straight facial appearance and you see she actually has got a kind of a short chin and the she's moved her jaw forward and the vertical height of the lower third of the face is far more than the the three sections in other words this ought to be off along here somewhere and make a lot of difference when she closes her mouth like this. Uh, she learned how to smile and keep her mouth open and it kind of covers this up. Uh, now let's take a look at her teeth and the result of these uh, years without orthodontics. And she has a definite breathing problem. She has a, she's got, she's loaded with problems here. She has a TMJ problem, which is causing pain for her. And her lower anterior teeth are extremely crowded uh, and pushed up underneath the upper anterior teeth. Her midline is quite a ways off. You can see that in here. Uh, that's not a, a big problem to deal with, but not breathing properly and not swallowing properly. Uh, these teeth have over erupted back here. In fact, all of them have over erupted, and that's caused this lower third of the face to be too much. This distance in here is way too much and looks bad, but if you smile it'll kind of cover that up so you know what they can actually see it so we've got a tmj problem and we've got to deal with that before we start the orthodontics now she's i think uh, class one on one side i think class two on the other let me look here and see i've forgotten uh, exactly what the, the size of what she is. Now she has a cross bite over here on the left side and she's kind of class two-ish on this side. Uh, I'm not looking at it right straight on. And the upper arch is real narrow. It should be way out like this. 
So she's been swallowing wrong and she had a tongue thrust problem. And, uh, there's just a lot of things wrong with this case that should have been treated when she was a little girl, as young as you could get to start the breathing correctly. But she was not. And so this is the result of it. And I'll show you the... It was difficult to go in and correct this. And she kept this high angle case. But I'll show you something at the end of this that's amazing. Over about uh, 16 years or something like this, we got the angle to go down some. Uh, let's... Uh, Look here at the lower arch, you see. So straighten this up. Now we don't have to widen these cuspids. And then get these teeth in here straight. Make some room. Now we used to think that you couldn't widen the cuspids out. Well, that is false. You have to keep the roots, the tip of the root behind the crown. But you can go out here and widen this out. And uh, I'm going to have this young lady if we can get a hold of her uh, take some more pictures this was started back in uh, 1988 uh, so just remember this was started back that early now we've, we've got this TMJ problem we've got to deal with that so we had to uh, this, is, this is the date we started Looks like November the 19th, 1988. And we've got a midline off, and we're going to have to move this part. Well, I'm sorry, this is where the center of it would be. We're going to have to move this over and this on the other direction to get the midline on. And the right side of the mouth now is in a good class one relation. You can hardly get that much better than that. Uh, so the left side is the one that's the, the class two. Now, she had the TMJ problem. About half the women that worked in her office had TMJ problems and also maybe we were stressful or something that caused, caused some of it. Now, we found out that we had to advance her mandible to solve the TMJ problem and put her in a split and get that and make sure that's where it needed to be. So if we brought this up like this, if we brought the jaw forward to where it quit, the joint quit hurting, we had to make her class three. So in the, correcting the inner digit, digitation, we had to wear a class class three elastic. See, in other words, we had to come off of here and have class three elastics to pull this back to class one. If we advance the mandible to solve the TMJ problem, so instead of having a class one class two case, we ended up. When we started orthodontics, we had a class 3, class 1 case. Now, that gets into complicated orthodontics, but that's what we had to do to overcome this lack of interceptive early orthodontics, and that's what I want to stress in this case. Now, the other side of the mouth had gone into crossbite, which uh, mouth breathers, you know, the tongues down here, pushes the lower arch out or widens it and the upper arch kind of goes in and they swallow wrong and everything and puts pressure on this to go in. There's no pressure on the tongue to bring this maxilla out and so it is narrow and she has a real breathing problem. It's hard for her to breathe through her nose. So we separated this palate I've got a lot of pictures on this young lady, and we need to hurry on through it. So we put a palatal separator in, 
and she's 32 years old right here now they didn't think you could separate pallets but I've taken them and separated them even up into the 40 but the secret of it is you got to put an arch wire in here that you can slide and you got brackets here and brackets here say well on the tooth but we pack open coil spring in between the two central teeth it's as much as you can get in there so you've got a pretty strong force pushing apart here at the centrals now the palatal separator is back in this area and the most bone that needs to be separated is up in this part of the mouth and I figured this out years ago and uh, we learned that you could can separate the pellets and even up to around 40 years of age you get much more than that and the sutures just don't come apart but you're putting the pressure back here and a lot of the bone separation up is in the front part of the mouth and you just don't get that force out here so we put it between the centrals out here and we can separate anybody in their th uh, 30s it was not a real problem for us to do that and you keep this has to be banded real tight and when you go apart this will kind of lean the teeth out a little but you leave it there a while and it, the roots get out with the crowns out here and when you bring the roots of these teeth out you widen the air passage up above in the in the vault up there where the air passage the, the air passage is too small in this area and the least little allergy stops you from breathing through the nose so you have to breathe through the mouth down here but uh, watch this and you see where we'll round this out like that so this is a it's an interesting case but it's a, a lot of difficult stuff you have to go through because somebody didn't get this early interceptive work done when they were young it'd be so much better if you had gone in there and got the airway opened and got her breathing through the nose and had her swallowed correctly uh, then her facial height would have been normal and uh, this so much uh, better things would be happening and all of her life up to 32 she's breathing through her her mouth almost all the time and she's not getting that uh, blessing of the uh, nitrogen oxide in oh, it comes out of the sinuses into the air helps all everything about it the, uh, your lungs even helps your heart your whole uh, everything you get about 10 or 15 percent more oxygen in your blood when you get the nitrous oxide and you get breathing through the nose so we've gone into that in several videos i hope you know that now on this other part we had to widen this lower arch out and had to widen it in this area so we made a what we call a super big daddy uh, wire here it went around like this and left some room in there and then we turned back and had an arm on it and you bring this arm in and hook it and pull this out now we widened this so much that we had space between these lower anterior teeth and the cuspids over there and they st they stayed they're still there today and i will try to get her back in the office and get some uh, 2017 shots of her all right now here is this uh the upper arch and we got the palatal separator I didn't show we pull these teeth together I put this 
spring in between to get this separated and it moved it apart. Now before we did this we put it in a split. We found out it had to be at this point and now we started the orthodontics and uh, we had to get her up there to get her out of pain. And here's this big daddy arch that goes back in here and circles around and comes out. This arm will be out here and you put it in. Now you don't have to use that. You can just build the other one out away from these teeth and you can tie them to it. But this gives it some springiness in here to do that. This is a complicated orthodontic TMJ job brought on solely because they didn't start this early. You should have gone in as a real young uh, child and get them breathing and functioning right. That's what we're pushing. And uh, it's my belief that the, the pediatric dentist, that's what they want to be called, and uh, I don't blame them, uh, should be doing this type of work and it to me it's ridiculous that they don't teach the pediatric dentists in the universities how to get in and do this part of orthodontics when I started this the orthodontist didn't do this hardly any of them that I know of was doing this preventive and interceptive stuff and so I would not feel bad about doing orthodontics if you're a pediatric dentist. Uh, so anyway, I don't preach on that anymore. Let's see what we did here. Now we, to correct this, we had to put a palatal separator in and we cranked this thing apart and we had it rigidly placed as you went apart, these teeth will lean out a little bit, but you stay in there several months with this thing in the mouth, and the teeth then work around, and the roots come out to match this, and that widens the air passage up here, sometimes twice as big as it was when you started. And at 32, she was a chronic mouth breather, and after about a week and a half with this in there we were opening it every day she said the thing came the sutures came, parted and it opened up and she said she could breathe so much better just a short time after we put this palatal separator in and so this is a good tool to use in orthodontics you got to hold the teeth rigid. Now these deals that just push on the teeth, uh, I don't like them because it just kind of leans the teeth out. And you don't bring the roots out, you just tilt this, they bring them in some. So that can even reduce the airway. You got to have them rigid, bring them out, and it'll usually open the airway enough that people can breathe again. So we opened it up. She's breathing good now. And we've done her TMJ work and got this out. We tied it off right here. You can see where we put that little uh, wire in there and tied that thing off. Uh, now you can see we have expanded these teeth out here. You remember how crowded this was? We have plenty of room for them in here. I've got one picture somewhere showing we had it wider than that uh, when we took this uh, uh, big daddy arch out. Uh, let's see. There we go. Okay. Now here that uh, arch is, and you had to make it to where it fit, and then you could expand it a little and put it in there, and now. Uh, the teeth would be back, there'd be some space in here so that the teeth could widen out against this. So they were back like this. We bent that in and tied it to the teeth and it, it brought the teeth out to 
this and that separated the lower anterior teeth, the lower cuspids, and we had this all kind of room for the to line up the other teeth. And they're still there today. And this was started in eighty eight and it's seventeen two thousand seventeen and they're still out there. So you can widen those teeth. Now here's this a wire if you want to bend it and try it, it works. Uh, you can do it by just making this out and tying them, but it doesn't have the elastic or the flexibility that this has. But this is a pretty hard job to do. Okay, there it is in the mouth. Now we, it has some force back here, but when you you go in here you can bend this you can expand this out here to where you have some force here and force in here it brings this whole side of the mouth out at the same time and this will pull the cuspids out now you see we're going to keep these roots angled down that but the roots have to be behind the crowns uh, so anyway uh, so this gets complicated and this is not orthodontics that you ought to jump into the first thing go and learn the basic stuff and do some real simple stuff until you get going in now this is complicated you had to do the TMJ stuff and you should not do the orthodontics without correcting the TMJ but you have to do that TMJ stuff prior to doing the orthodontics. Okay. Now this is the uh, some blown up views. I've got a lot of views of this case. I'm going to probably bore you to death. It's going to take a while to do this. Now you can see where that was tied up here and bring this archway out in the motor so it expanded the whole darn arch plus it brought the cuspids out and then we lined up the laterals uh, and there's the palatal separator again this uh, I do not show the spring that I had in there when I opened it uh, when they started we had a lot of pressure up in this part between those teeth and we got that separated then we took that off and then we brought the cut the uh, the centrals back together again and that left space in here that we lined the others up on. now here <laughs> here is the result of that big daddy see it's coming in there pulling pulling this out and this all these teeth are coming out to the side here has a certain amount of force back here and force up here and this bringing this to this help bring this out and then you make sure that this uh, you tip the roots of this cuspids be that they must be behind where the crown is then there's nothing there that makes this cuspid just want to lean back over but if you just lean the cuspid out and the roots are back here the crown will work its way back over a period of time and I think uh, this is what they were talking about uh, they will go back if you do that and if you don't put the cuspids in there right now we had this all kind of room to line these up and so we did now this young lady has a periodontal problem she's lost a good bit of bone on them and she also is a smoker and that makes it bad for the periodontal condition but her teeth are still there and they're looking good and she looks good and we got the vertical to go down over a long period of time like uh, it, the pictures I, I'll show you later and that's unusual that you can lower that. Now, this is, we just line those cuspids up and bring that together. And now we've done part of that. 
That's, I'm going to run through some of this pretty quick because I took a bunch of pictures on them. But uh, if you really want to know how to do this, you can study these. Now, another thing you can do in adult orthodontics is you can drop the brackets down on the lower end of your teeth. If they're showing a lot, you can keep the, you keep the teeth right here just in the cusp is a little bit higher than the laterals and uh, this thing by dropping the brackets down where you come along here at the cuspid and you drop between the cuspid and this then you bring your arch wire down and you just keep the arch wire here and these teeth are being lined up in this way and you don't even see these brackets and i had plastic uh, whatever the clear brackets on the upper in here. I, I didn't like those brackets, but everybody wants them. And of course, the assistants, when we were doing braces on them, they all wanted to learn uh, ceramic brackets or whatever you call it. Now, you see the arch wires down here, but the teeth all lined up with the rest of them. And you don't see these anterior teeth if you show them when you're talking. Now we've finished the upper and we put a retainer in there. And I want to tell you, we did this case in 11 months. We had it finished. I wasn't ready to take them out, but she was wanting to get them out so bad. And she didn't wear enough class 3 elastics on this side. To really get the teeth back so it relapsed a little bit and uh, so we wouldn't go back in there and do it again uh, because of that so she's gone with a slight class 3 on the right side of the mouth but the TMJ has been no problem since then and the teeth have stayed the same and the cuspid tooth you see it roots behind the crown they have stayed there see? and that's the secret of it you have to move these roots back and I think that's what didn't happen in the school where they were doing this research they were in a hurry didn't have much time and so they lean the teeth back and they will always go back if you got the root out in front of the crown the darn crown will go back over the root and it will close back up. But if you take the root back, and that takes a little more time, and you got to know a little bit more about putting tip in this tooth right here, you, you can actually tip that tooth down like that, you know, and, and you bring that root back in. Okay, uh, so much for that. You see the root of this cuspid is darn sure behind the crown, you see. And that's the secret of it. So you can expand the lower cuspid all you want to, you know, within reason to line everything up, but just keep the root just to the crown as you go back. So you gotta if you don't know how to bend the wire. You go, you've got to put tip in them all the time to get that to happen. And as you push this root back, it pushes the crown forward and it makes this, uh, it tends to make it more class three-ish because it tends to bring all these teeth out when you tip them like that. Okay, it's lined up good. We've done that. Now she where's the retainer we got these colored things came in so she had to have a colored retainer put in and then we put a bite plate on this the lower anterior teeth fit into this little groove right up here and that keeps the uh, overjet lower bite down to the good position all right here it is lined up again and she's edge to edge but it kind of slips back underneath there now this is where they they didn't pull this back far enough you see and so the thing is relapsing to some extent 
this cusp it should be going down in here and this one should be down so it's slightly class 3 ish over on this side but the center lines on and it looks good you don't notice this but that is not uh, where we had pulled it but you gotta get bound past it to let it settle in and come back in here and we didn't stay in there long enough it was only 11 months during this treatment and this is the side over here it's, it's lined up good class 1 relation on the left side now she's wearing this retainer and things are staying in place and we bonded this together but these teeth will stay there they don't have this uh, tendency to just crawl back over this way uh, but I bonded a three to three on the lower anyway now here we are a little later and there is the bite plate where we put that in she bites on that and that holds her jaw forward and you can tell she really wears this thing there's a track of this retainer in the mouth you can see going back there we make the retainers kind of a horseshoe shape and they'll stay in and you don't need any clasps or wires going over the teeth but they chew on and go one way when it's in there and another way when you take it out now we've got our jaw forward and she looks good now but yet she's got too much vertical and she has her lips apart and it looks nice but when she puts the lips together it doesn't look near that good so if you've got a high too, too much of the vertical down here and you're like this you can just smile a lot keep your mouth open and people don't know that you have that you remember, if you remember Carol Burnett in the, the movie star had far too much she always had her mouth open now here, the way we started out, you see the chin, we advanced the chin now, and it stays out there, and this doesn't look good at all, really, if you close to, then you're too full all the way in there, we'll show these pictures later, now this is kind of a nice, <laughs> She took her picture, it looks real good there, and she smiles. And uh, this is a uh, the gum line is good, and from the top front, that looks good. This is after we finish. Now, you wouldn't recognize, but if you close the lips together, you will recognize the high angle in here. Here it is, 1990, and that's the way it looks. And here the mid lines off a little bit. This side over here, we it kind of came back to class three ish a little bit, and this moved over to this side. Okay, uh, you're probably getting tired of looking at this, but uh, this is a case you need to know if you don't go in early and do these things and prevent this from happening most of this would not have taken place at all uh, if you had started the early interceptive and got her functioning right when she was just a young child this would definitely not be this tough a uh, case to do but it is pretty tough now we have this wire touching these teeth I needed to rotate that one a little bit more and the other side too so that holds these teeth in position but allows them to come together and they wear in or they grind themselves in where they really fit tight they, they cover that so the importance of having the teeth together and nothing is going across to interfere with it and those plastic shells 
are the same thickness all the way around and they don't let the teeth come together and I don't like to use them now sometimes where you just don't you're doing work and uh, you're being paid by insurance or some other government or whatever and they don't pay half enough to do it right they'll put these shell retainers in there they don't cost anything you can just suck them down on the model yeah. but that's not good retention and here's this retainer fits around these teeth they can't go this way and they bar out here they can't go much out here this one's got some space in there I don't know whether this was the end good back here I don't think this retainer was in the mouth good right there now this is 92 and the case is still holding and this is 90 that's 90 and this is really bonded solid right there uh, we go through some some of the panorexes now this was the first panorex we did and this is 1988 and her age is 31 and 11 months she's almost 32 years old right here and we were able to separate this palate and you can do that too just remember put a lot of force between the centrals so your arch wire has to be where it, the teeth can slide out on it in here once you separate it and get going you got a big space in here then you can bring the teeth back together uh, in there that's what happened here and I didn't have any photographs of this here's the second panorex and this shows the palatal separator end and the super big daddy that we've got here tied in that helps bring this apart down here in the anterior part of the mouth. You can do with these big daddy arch wires during your everything you can do with something on the inside. The palatal separator is different. You've got to get that rigidness to bring these roots out. If you get the roots out, you have increased the airway up here and that's what you need in most of these cases okay uh, another one after we took that stuff off uh, she's age she's 32 and one month looks like up there and it's 1989 and we finished this thing uh, it was correct in 11 months and she just died to get out of them so we took her out too early we should have kept her in there a little more with a little more class 3 correction on the right side of the mouth now this is 89 and there's the now she's got periodontal problems but she still she takes care of them real good but she darn she still smokes you know and that's bad for it and the teeth are still there in 89 and it's 2017 I haven't uh, taken any x-ray or seen her uh, what they look like what the bone looks like now but uh, she's probably going to have some problems now we go through here she moved to Atlanta and worked for a lady pediatric dentist in Atlanta and I don't know the name of the dentist I've got to find that out uh, she's never if she's ever contacted me I, I don't know about it but uh, she worked there and did a, and helped her with her orthodontic that's there in Atlanta and at least she was a, pedi a pediatric dentist and was doing orthodontics and I think every one of you ought to do it uh, anyway we put this retainer and I put the, this down and you can move this over there by putting little bits of composite on teeth to force it to stay in certain uh, positions in the mouth and just keep that down and that's 
not too good of a picture there, and that's 92. But brother, she wears her retainer, you can see. Maybe too much, you know, take them out and massage your gums up in there. And the three to three is still in there. And this was 88, the way she looked. She was class one on the right side. And uh, there it is today. And this is 97. Not today, but it's 97. And it's still holding. But you can see this bottom jaw is coming forward a little bit. And it slipped a little and it slipped a little further. She's in Atlanta now working in. She got this graft put in to kind of protect these the roots on these teeth they were really the bone wasn't all that good just it wasn't good that it started and it certainly didn't get any better during the treatment now she brushes the devil out of them but whatever it is it wears that off a lot of controversy on that okay now the bite was deep and these teeth were crowded. And that's that in 88. That's not plain here, it's a little blurred. Uh, a lot blurred, really. But there she is in, uh, I think it's 92 or something, or 97. And this has slipped more, and you see this midline is off over here. You'll see what that uh, date is later. Uh, now, that's the side that had the cross bite caused by the tongue being in the bottom of the mouth, pushing on these teeth more, and the upper not developing properly. We got in and spread all this upper out, and she said she could breathe again. This, it was less than two weeks after we started this palatal separator that she said she could breathe much better because the airway was wider. Okay, there's these teeth are they cut the grooves in there so she has to go in and get fillings in this part of the mouth. I've got some of that myself. Okay, there is the uh, palatal width and everything you're going to measure here and here and see the width changes in this part right here I think I may have something now that's uh, 97 it's a blurred shot and, uh, but it's much wider here it is in 88 on the lower and there it is in 97 uh, on the lower and it's still out there today uh, we've got some 2006 slides. Now here's what she looked like when her jaw was back. And here's what she, well that's the way her teeth looked when her jaw was back. You see this is the end over here and she got a little cross bite on this side. Now this is complicated orthodontics. And it's not something that you should jump on a case like this. Uh, with just knowing how to put braces on and all that, that doesn't answer the question. you got to stay in there and learn a lot. And we've got some good instructors uh, in the American Orthodontic Society that know how to do this. And if you want to learn it, you can come take courses with them. Now this was the width of the upper arch to start with, and that's the lower arch, the width it had, and there's what we went to. I think we've seen a lot of these pictures now. This was class one, and it was class two over here, palatal separator. My gosh, it looks like we go to stuff. And there's the uh, the big daddy arch wire end. And there's the separator. We've got some duplication of pictures look like here. There's a palatal separator. Let me get down here to the end of this. 
I'm sorry for this. I've got some duplication of pictures in there that I didn't realize. So we'll have to speed through this right quick. Something is going wrong here. I don't know. Okay, now we're at 2006. We got her in and took a bunch of pictures here. We didn't use the tag. We just put a name up here, and and this is the date. This was uh, September, I guess, of 28, 2006. And here's her teeth, 2006. And this side is really ground in good. And from 88 to 2006, that's, it was about 12, well, about 12 years plus uh, six, so it's about 18 years after we started the case. Now this side you see is back class three. Uh, we didn't get enough class three correction over here. We advanced her manual but she stayed out there and it's working fine so we didn't go back to do this she smokes and you see the stain on the teeth and she's lost a lot of bone structure on them but they're staying straight at 2006 and I'm almost certain if you go in there and take up 2017 pictures it'll still be there and the cusp is definitely are where they are stay now this is uh, 2006 i think that's the last pictures i have but look at the facial structure now she's a nice looking lady now when she closes her teeth together her jaw looks so much better than it did and that's close again that's not perfect but it looks darn good and there are some other angles on it She's a serious looking gal there. Now looking right here, I want you to look. This vertical height of his face is almost down to what it normally was. Now how on earth does this happen? We corrected function. We got her swallowed correctly so she bites too when she swallows. And over a long period of time, if you get them functioning right, the vertical height will come down, and that's something that was unheard of. I, I really don't have a, uh, this is not being taught. Nobody seems to know that. And I'm not positive on it. I don't have a bunch of patients to show that on. But let me show you that there's where she was when we started. She closed her mouth, and there's where it is today. Or you know, it's even maybe further down than that as she gets older. Now that's, you wouldn't, there's really nothing wrong with this. Maybe back just slightly. All right, you see where it was. And there she is smiling. Got a beautiful smile. She's living back here in Texas now. Her husband, I think, retired from General Motors. And, uh, they stayed over in Atlanta for a good while. She worked for a pedodontist over there. I mean, a pediatric dentist. <laughs> I've got to learn that. Now, this smile is good. She has a little bit of gumminess there, but not much. And that's what it was like prior to that. And uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's the end of this one. I hope you learn something if we had or somebody had gotten in there when she was a little girl and corrected the function and got her thing you would not have had to do all this orthodontics to correct i think it had something to do with the joint problem too so i'm gonna shut this down and